chapter 8 and uh, the title uh, of the chapter Babu Majaa Fir Ruqa Wa Tama Ruqa Incantation Am I saying it right? Talismans and amulets What's the wording of these things? And again as it's mentioned before for those who were not with us from the beginning the first few chapters was basically setting the foundation and the principles of understanding the Tawheed and avoiding what negates the Tawheed which is the Shirk and associating partners with Allah and from few chapters back the specifics of the things that falls under the category of Shirk it is not enough for a Muslim to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone unless he denies Shirk and associating partners with Allah major and minor and the Tawheed is basically that takes the person outside the fold of Islam from major shirk to become a Muslim this is the Tawheed and then a person the Muslim should work on completing one's Tawheed perfecting one's Tawheed so that a person would enter Jannah without any previous punishment uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to have the perfect level of the Tawheed or to complete one's Tawheed that's why the whole religion of Islam is basically about Tawheed Tawheed anything if we even talk about optional acts of worship this has nothing to do with the tawheed why because why would a muslim do an optional act of worship seeking the pleasure of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone this is the meaning of la ilaha illallah no one is worthy of worship except allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how does he do this optional act of worship according to the way of the prophet sallallahu alaihi which is muhammad rasulullah so everything relates back to the tawheed the oneness of worship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sins weakens the Tawheed because if a person disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that decreases the Iman that weakens the Tawheed not the belief but it weakens the Tawheed and the person would have a deficiency till he repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with these issues that has been mentioned the amulets and things of that nature it comes into the chapter or the topic of the means and asbab Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created asbab means in this life that governs the life of the people these asbab are of two types one type is the physical means that people know and understand uh, breathing the air eating food these are means medicine things of that nature it's permissible of course to deal with these means with the hearts attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala putting the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the means has to be halal permissible the other type of means are the religious means that we only know it with the revelation Quran and Sunnah of the Prophet that Quran is cure physical cure to people and cure to their diseases and sins and so on and uh, for example whoever fears Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah will provide for him these are means the disbelievers do not know that but the believers know that because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran if people take means other than these two types of mean then it takes them under the category of shirk worse than a major uh, sin so that's why it comes into the subject of the amulets and the talismans and all these types of things that was present in the time of Jahiliyyah before the Prophet ﷺ, and it's still present until nowadays some people say well we have more important things to talk about no this is very important that we talk about this if we as Muslims do not purify ourselves and protect our deen from anything that would negate or weakens the Tawheed what is goodness then after that if we do not protect the first pillar of Islam which is La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah if we have the best manners and the best way and things of that nature but we have deficiencies in the origin of the deen in the belief in La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah what benefit can come into the rest of the pillars of Islam this is the most important thing that has to be uh, pure and has to be only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again based on the verses of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet so here when it comes to Ruqya uh, Ruqa the plural of Ruqya Ruqya or incantation or things to be recited uh, some Ruqa can be evil and can be bad and some Ruqa can be good uh, whatever is good from Ruqa is what the Prophet ﷺ approved and what is that uh, the Prophet ﷺ said to the companions عنهم, present your Ruqa the things that you recite a ways for cure uh, present it to me and then he said alayhi salatu wasalam to them urqu ma lam yakun shirkan make ruqya as long as it's not shirk so any ruqya that has shirk in it then definitely it's not permissible calling unto other than allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if it's the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam 
When we say in the verses of the Quran, when we read, "Wala tushriku bihi shay'a," do not associate anything with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Nakir of isyak nafi in linguistic, it's denying anything matters of shirk, and it's nakira, meaning it's anything that means anything. There's no difference between an idol or prophets or pious people or angels. Anything other than Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it's not permissible for a Muslim to turn to, to call to. This is definitely the same. Nobody would say, well, this is the Prophet ﷺ. Then it's still under the same category. The Prophet ﷺ, the love of the Prophet ﷺ is that we follow him, we obey him, and we love him alayhi salatu wasalam. So uh, the issue of ruqa, uh, reciting from the Qur'an, from the du'as of the Prophet ﷺ, general du'a, as long as it's not shirk, it's something that is good. Seeking cure, physical cure to physical ailments, that is definitely something permissible and good for a person to do for oneself or for others. Anything that has shirk, then it's evil. Calling into a jinn, like some people do, or calling to a human being or whatever there is, this is all forms of shirk. Talismans and amulets, things that people hang around their neck or their waist or their wrist or whatever there is, are these physical means? Does it have physical cure? Actually, imagine that you're presenting Islam to a non-Muslim. Tell him, you know, if you put a, a thread around your arm, it will cure you from your heart disease. You know, making fun of ourselves. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if this is something mentioned in the Quran, we submit ourselves. Or the sunnah of the Prophet But it's all foolish things. People, shaitan, deceive them. And out of ignorance, people would believe in that the hearts become attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why it's so dangerous. It's forms of shirk. The Prophet sallallahu and again, we do not use our intellect in this. We use the verses of the Quran and the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ and this is what we need to submit ourselves to. And again, I need to be brief so that we can finish the book, inshallah, by next weekend. Uh, the hadith for Sahih on Abi Bashir al-Ansari radiallahu an, أنه كان مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في بعض أسفاره فأرسل رسولا ألا يبقى ين في رقبة بعير قلادة من وتر أو قلادة إلا قطعت. The Prophet ﷺ he wasn't uh, the, this companion of the Prophet Sallallahu Abi Bashir al-Ansari. This is in Bukhari al-Muslim. He was in the company of Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam on one of his journeys. Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam sent a messenger ordering, there shall, there shall not remain any necklace of bowstring or any other kind of necklace round the necks of camels except it is cut off. This is uh, something that the Prophet ﷺ ordered the people to do. So again, this is continuing about mentioning the things that would negate the tawheed of a person as a result of the heart being attached to other than Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Uh, it's mentioned in the Hadith, "Allah fi raqabati ba'ir qilada." Qilada, what things they put around the animals seeking blessings or protection to these animals, or water from the uh, the, the thread of a of a, a bow, a bowstring. They would believe that this can bring benefit to the animals or whatever there is. So the Prophet ﷺ someone said someone to call people to cut these things off, which proves clearly that hanging these things to push away harm, it's definitely has the same rulings as amulets as it's mentioned before, which is forbidden because it's seeking a mean that it's not something that is physical mean or something that is mentioned in the Quran or the Sunnah of the Prophet. ﷺ. Also, it shows that how a Muslim should forbid the evil. That there's something evil, in, we need to enjoin good and forbid evil in the best manner and to call people to يعني, obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone and also to convey this message to the people. We need to convey these types of uh, understanding and beliefs uh, to all people because this is the order of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The next hadith, hadith of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu an narrated that he heard the Prophet ﷺ saying, Inna al-ruqa wa tama'ima wa tiwala shirk. That Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu said that the Prophet ﷺ said, al-ruqa, al-tama'im, and al-tiwala are all acts of shirk. What are these things? Al-ruqa, we mentioned before these recitations, that has any forms of shirk in it, the calling unto other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, al-tama'im is the act of putting amulets around the necks of children, or around the necks of the human beings, grown-ups or animals or whatever there is, think, believing that it pushes away harm and so on. 
But tewila, it's something that they believe that it makes the wife loves her husband or the husband loves his wife. All of these things are all matters of shirk and it's something that should be yani, avoided or even protecting the children from the evil eye by having these things around them or wearing it or whatever there is. All of this are forms of shirk as it's clearly mentioned in the hadith. Clearly mentioned in the hadith. So it's something that it's not opinions or anything. It's the clear hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And then the next uh, hadith, the hadith of uh, uh, Abdullah ibn Ukayyim radiallahu an, he said in uh, hadith al-marfu' man ta'allaqa shay'an wukila ilayhi which means whoever uses or attaches or wears a talisman to himself will have that talisman put in charge of him. Put it by Imam Ahmad Tirmidhi. Why, he hang, why he's hanging these things? having the heart attached to it to push away harm, then he will be, uh, make these things, these things will be in charge of him. That means what? It won't benefit him. Because it's not even charge of its own self. It's nothing but a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Does not bring what is good, does not push away harm. That means he's wasting his life. And whoever have his heart attached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he put his trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah is sufficient for the Muslim. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be sufficient for the believers, they do not seek the help from any other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also, Imam Ahmad reported from the hadith of Ruayfa' radiallahu an, who said that Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to him, Ya Ruayfa' la'alla al-hayata satatulu bik fa'akhbir al-nasa anna man aqada lihyatahu aw taqallada wataran aw istanja bi raji' dabbatin aw azmin fa'inna muhammadan sallallahu alayhi wa sallam bari'un minna. Which means, or wife, it may be that you will live a longer time after me. So inform people that whoever ties a knot in his beard. They used to do that as a form of pride or something like this. They have big beards and they would make knots and like braids in the hairs. Uh, places any string or cord around the neck as a charm. Or cleans himself after toilet with animal dung or bone. Then Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa has disowned him, has nothing to do with him. It's not an easy thing. It's not to be belittled. The Prophet sallallahu would say that to something definitely is a major thing. Not something that is little, something like a major thing. And that's why a person should be away from such a thing. It shows that it's not permissible to do that to one's beard. And I guess this is something that might be present in some cultures in which a person should avoid. And uh, also that uh, the issue of taqallada wataran, the water or the, bra or the bow string, people would <coughs> wear it around themselves, pushing away harm and things like that, it's not permissible. Or to purify oneself from the dung or bone, it's not permissible. It's mentioned this hadith and other hadith, and it's the, uh, the, the food of the jinn, so it's not permissible. Uh, and whoever do that, the Prophet ﷺ said that these are crimes. The Prophet ﷺ is disowning him. He's free from such a behavior that means it's major sins or shirk, depending on what it is. Uh, uh, the next hadith, uh, Sayyidina Jubayri said, Man qata'a tamimatan min insan kana ka'idli raqaba. Whoever cut an amulet or talisman from anyone, it would be equal to liberating a slave. This is not a hadith. This is the saying of Sayyidina Jubayr. And the ulama, they say, Sayyidina Jubayr won't say that. How would he know the reward unless he heard it from someone like Ibn Abbas Ibn Abbas heard it from the Prophet So it shows the virtues of forbidding the evil, especially with these things. That's why, again, it's our duty. If you see someone wearing these amulets and things like that, don't leave him. In a nice way, stay with him till he takes it out. Convince him, explain to him. It's matters of shirk. The Prophet ﷺ said that it won't benefit you. And let me cut it. And you see there's nothing. Inshallah will happen to you. And uh, this is what he said, the virtues of doing that. That as if you are freed a slave. You free them from being enslaved to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are all forms of having the hearts attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is chapter 8. Chapter 9. Chapter 9. Uh, whoever seeks blessings through a tree, through a tree, a stone, or the like. These things are happening among Muslims today. 
Some of the Muslims, they seek blessings in these physical things. Whether it's a tree, not necessarily any tree, but they believe since this tree, this pious man to sit under it or whatever there is. So they seek blessings from a tree or from a stone or the like or the jacket of alim, for example, or his stick or whatever, the spot that he sits on, or all these types of things that people seek blessings from. And you would see that in the lives of many, many Muslims, wiping over the walls of buildings or masajid or uh, human beings or, you know, all kinds of things that is definitely not the way of the Prophet ﷺ. It's even matters of shirk having the hearts attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وقول الله تعالى أفرأيتم اللات والعزة ومنات الثالثة الأخرى ألكم الذكر وله الأنثى تلك إذا قسمة ضيزة إن هي إلا أسماء سميتموها أنتم وأبأكم الآيات Have you then considered اللات and العزة the two idols of the pagans Arabs and منا another idol of the pagans are Arabs uh, the other third uh, This is again mentioning some of these شركيات some of these things the matters of شرك اللات والعزة uh, are two idols at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, the people of Jahiliyyah they used to worship other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allat is uh, was uh, a white stone and it has some things written on it by the Ta'if and it was said that it's uh, an idol of a man they used to make the uh, suwaik which is the tamr paste for the people in Hajj in times of Jahiliyyah used to make them and he would give it to the people for free, right? So after he died, they uh, built an image for him. And after some time, it's become worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is Allat. They would stay by his grave after he died. And Al-Uzza, it was a, a tree that uh, they built around it and they made, it, uh, they made curtains to it uh, between uh, Mecca and the Ta'if. And Mana is another idol between Mecca and Medina that they used to worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regardless of the stories behind these things but it's basically things that has been worshipped besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala meaning that the disbelievers at the time of the Prophet sallam, they did not believe that these idols or images created and provides and so on no, they believed that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only creator, the only provider but they turned to these things as an intermediaries or Something between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran about them. ما نعبدهم إلا ليقربونا إلى الله زلف. We do not worship them except that they would get us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their goal is to be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But they took these idols as things to get them, to draw them closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala condemned them and said that they are mushrikeen, disbelievers. So believing in the oneness of the creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and so on is not enough unless a person worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all acts of worship to be done only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. So we see from this, since the disbelievers, what is that they used to do with the lat al-uzza and mana and so on, that it was a tree. They seek blessings from a tree or a stone or whatever there is. And that's something that has to be يعني, avoided definitely from the Muslims. The, the, the hadith in this chapter, and this is only the one hadith in the chapter, reported by Tirmidhi, and it's a sound hadith, uh, that عن أبي واقد الليثي قال خرجنا مع رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى حنين ونحن حدثاء عهد بكفر وللمشركين سدرة يعكفون عندها وينوطون بها أسلحتهم يقال لها ذات أنواط فمررنا بسدرة فقلنا يا رسول الله اجعل لنا ذات أنواط كما لهم ذات أنواط فقال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم الله أكبر إنها السنن قلتم والذي نفسي بيده كما قالت بنو إسرائيل لموسى اجعل لنا إلها كما لهم آلهة قال إنكم قوم تجهلون لتركبن سننا من كان قبلكم uh, He's saying that we went out with Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم on the campaign to Hunayn while we had just left disbelief for Islam, they were just new Muslims. The mushrikeen, the disbelievers, had a sidra, lot tree, that they would stay there and hang their arms on, called that and what? This is the name of the tree. When we passed a sidra, another tree, we asked, O Messenger of Allah, won't you make for us another that and what, like the disbelievers, 
just like their, that and what, so that we can hang our arms. Allah's Messenger وسلم, said, Allahu Akbar, by the one, meaning Allah who holds my soul in his hand, verily these are the ways of earlier nations. You have said exactly as Bani Israel said to Musa السلام, make for us a God just as their gods. When Bani Israel said that to Musa السلام, when they crossed the sea and they saw the people worshipping other than Allah, they asked Musa for something the like. He said, verily you are a people who know not. Certainly you will follow the ways of those who went before you. So uh, this hadith clearly shows how the Prophet ﷺ forbade them because they believed that there are some blessings that they can get from these trees as the disbelievers used to believe in these uh, trees hanging their arms on it. So uh, it shows definitely seeking blessings from physical things, physical blessings like this, it's something, it's all forms of shirk, associating partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that it shows the fact that it's valid to happen to a Muslim. That Muslims fall into these things. Opposite to some people think that Muslims do not fall into shirk. These are Muslims, but no in Islam, ignorant about the uh, meanings of the Tawheed. So they asked for something that the disbelievers would do in matters of seeking blessings, which is matters of shirk. So it also proves that. And uh, how that worshipping others than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala starts step by step, and this is the main goal of the shaitan. The shaitan doesn't really care much about the major sins. Of course he cares about it because it weakens the tawheed and it's definitely, we should not belittle it. But what is the goal of the shaitan, the shaitan towards each and every one of us? To make him die as a disbeliever. Not just to die as a sinner. Shaitan is someone that does not give up. Even to the best scholar, the shaitan wants him to die as a kafir. So he would do whatever it takes, taking him step by step, and the shaitan goes into steps to take the person outside the fold of Islam. And that's why a person should always be on his guard, should never be or feel that he is secure from falling into shirk and kufr. No, because this is what the shaitan wants from the person. So an uh, easy way to enter into the people as a result of ignorance is to have their hearts attached to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet ﷺ said that the shirk will fall into this ummah. As he mentioned that you would follow the ways of the people that uh, were before you, like the Jews and the Christians and so on. And uh, again, the reason that they said that is they were seeking blessings from such a tree thinking that it can protect them or help them or whatever there is. And a few hundred years ago, and I don't know if it's still present. People, they would still seek blessings from trees, Muslims, a special tree, right? And because of the ignorance that prevails, imagine a tree, something happens in a tree that looks like a miracle thing. People will go to the tree and sit under the tree and, and attach themselves to the tree, right? Because of the lack of understanding and spreading the knowledge of the Tawheed and these Ahadith and, and keep on repeating it over and over as a result of not having this established in communities and so on it's very easy for people in fitan especially to fall into these things so we have to be careful and always teach about matters of the deen uh, and to be away from that the Prophet ﷺ is someone that the Sahaba عنهم, used to seek blessings from in his lifetime والسلام, and this is definitely permissible uh, but after the Prophet ﷺ, it should not be said that, well, since they used to seek blessings from the Prophet ﷺ, his sweat, his uh, uh, anything from the Prophet ﷺ, even the water dropping from his wudu, that means we can do the same thing for the uh, pious people after the Prophet ﷺ. Definitely it's not permissible among the consensus of the ulama. Why? Because they didn't do that to Abu Bakr ﷺ. They didn't do that to Umar ﷺ. Abu Bakr ﷺ is equal to all the ummah of the Prophet ﷺ. The best waliya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the best person after the messengers of Allah is Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Why the Sahaba radiallahu anhu didn't seek blessings physically from him or Umar radiallahu anhu and so on. All of a sudden after hundreds of years people discovered there are some people that they need to seek blessings from. It's all definitely not the way of the Prophet alayhi